heart failure is a disease where the efficiency of the heart functioning is reduced so when there is an inefficient or reduced functioning of the heart this condition is heart failure please do not consider that heart failure means is a very negative connotation what we need to understand is the efficiency of the heart is reduced uh, for example some on a particular day a person might not be working to its to his or her fullest efficiency similarly a heart also might not function to its fullest efficiency that is what we call as heart failure please do not think that heart failure means the heart has stopped or heart is uh, is beyond repair or something like that we have got very efficient therapies for heart failure heart failure is a inefficient heart functioning capacity so the inefficient heart functioning can happen with a reduction in the pumping ability of the heart or called as the systolic heart failure that is the pumping of the heart is reduced that is what is called as the systolic heart failure or the efficiency of the heart is reduced because there is a expansion failure when there is a failure of expansion of the heart that is what we call as the diastolic heart failure that means the heart becomes stiff and unable to expand well so sometimes it is called as the stiff heart syndrome so that means there is a pumping failure that is called systolic heart failure there is a expansion failure or a stiff heart related problem that is the diastolic heart failure heart failure as we have already discussed systolic heart failure is most commonly associated with a previous heart attack or a damage to the heart muscle either because of infection or valvular heart disease or certain other diseases which can indirectly affect the pumping a function of the heart so a systolic heart failure is due to a muscle damage of the heart so that means the heart muscle gets damaged and it cannot contract effectively on the contrary diastolic heart failure is due to a thick and a stiff heart systolic heart failure is a thin and a weak heart so the diastolic heart failure which is a thick and a stiff heart is unable to expand leading to an increased pressures in the heart chambers so that is what we call as the diastolic heart failure so usually the causes which a systolic or a thin and a weak heart are due to heart attack whereas a thick and a stiff heart or a diastolic heart failure is a consequence of aging process presence of high blood pressure presence of high blood sugar or diabetes presence of other uh, problems uh, such as other infill sometimes there could be some diseases in which the heart muscle gets thickened so that is what sometimes sometimes called as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy where the thickness of the heart muscle is increased so systolic heart failure is due to weakening of the heart diastolic heart failure is due to the thickening of the heart secondary to high blood pressure blood sugar or sometimes a muscle related problem or sometimes a simple aging also can cause a diastolic heart failure before we dwell into that uh, how do we differentiate a low heart failure or a systolic heart failure from a diastolic heart failure is if the ejection fraction is less than 40% then we call it as the systolic heart failure diastolic heart failure is when the ejection fraction or the pumping ability of the heart uh, is more than 50% ejection fraction is a measure of the pumping ability of the heart so it is a number so if it is less than 40 the pumping ability is reduced if it is more than 50 the pumping ability is normal this ejection fraction is estimated by echocardiography heart failure is a disease where the patient presents with increasing breathlessness 
on walking. That means they feel short of breath on walking in the initial phases. Later on, even with small activities like having a bath or having a full meal, the patient gets breathless. In the advanced phase of the disease, the patient becomes breathless even at rest or sometimes cannot lie flat on a cot. They need to immediately sit up or use 3-4 pillows to get relieved of the breathlessness. This is what we call as orthopnea. Very rarely in a much advanced disease, the person can develop breathlessness in the middle of the night and can get woken up suddenly from the sleep because of extreme breathlessness. So that is also a feature of heart failure. Either these are all the features of a failing of the left heart. On the contrary, if there is a failing of the right side of the heart, then the person can experience swelling of the feet, there is a puffiness or the swelling of the face, bogginess beneath the eyes, or sometimes a neck vein is engorged or distended with rapid pulsations. All these are features of a right-sided failure. Right-sided failure predominantly presents with swelling. Left-sided failure predominantly presents with breathlessness. Now let us come to systolic heart failure or diastolic heart failure. Both systolic heart failure and diastolic heart failure can present with both the symptoms. That means they can present with various degrees of breathlessness or they can present with various degrees of various locations of swelling in the body. Uh, and both, of, both the diseases, left and right heart failure, can be present with similar or identical symptoms. The diagnosis of heart failure is made on the basis of patient's symptoms, the various underlying risk factors like the presence of diabetes, hypertension, smoking, previous heart attack, electrocardiogram or ECG, X-ray chest and also echocardiography. The gold standard investigation or which is done regularly for the diagnosis of heart failure is echocardiography. For people who have got systolic heart failure or a thin dilated or an enlarged heart, the echocardiography is grossly abnormal with a reduced pumping ability of the heart seen on echocardiography. As we discussed, the number or ejection fraction is 40% and below. If the ejection fraction which is estimated on echocardiography is less than 40%, then we call it as the systolic heart failure. The problem comes in the diagnosis of diastolic heart failure where the ejection fraction is more than 50% and it might be con it is considered as a normal ejection fraction but still the patient is breathless so in those circumstances we depend upon some advanced echocardiographic parameters to diagnose the diastolic heart failure a, an important screening test for the diagnosis of heart failure is the pro bnp test if the pro-BNP test is less than 125, we can safely exclude heart failure as the cause for breathlessness. It is not uncommon to see elderly people presenting with breathlessness. At times they can be smokers and have an underlying lung problem. But these people can have an associated heart problem also. So, do so to differentiate whether the breathlessness is related to heart or related to the lung, we perform a simple blood test called the NT Pro BNP. So, if the level is less than 125, we can say with certainty that this is not due to heart failure. That means the breathlessness is not due to heart failure. The treatment of heart failure, very importantly, determined by the four pillars what we give. So that means there are four therapies what are important for the treatment of heart failure. So we got four different groups of drugs and they have to be given 
for all patients with heart failure. In addition, people who present with breathlessness or presenting with swelling of the feet, they require additional drugs called the water pills or the diuretics. So these drugs increase the urination and remove the excess fluid from the body. So these are called the water pills or the diuretics to cause a symptom relief. Now coming to prevention of heart failure. Prevention of heart failure is preventing heart attack by good lifestyle modifications, good treatment of diabetes, hypertension or high cholesterol and if there is a family history, periodic health checkups to uh, detect the disease quite early in the disease framework. So that is how we can prevent the disease, treat the symptoms with diuretics or water pills, reverse the disease or retard the progression of the disease using the four pillars of heart failure therapy. Those are the four different classes of the drugs, all the four classes of the drugs to be given to get the best relief from the symptoms of heart failure. Compared to what we used to see for the treatment of heart failure, when we used to see very high mortality, once we adopted the four pillars treatment, the therapy of heart failure is what we see is excellent results with a almost doubling or even 2.5 fold increase in the survival rates. That means previously patients who used to survive for three to five years, nowadays we see them surviving for about eight to 10 years with the adoption of good, uh, well-indicated treatments for the treatment of heart failure.